Hey, welcome to Con Carolina's Television. I am Bronner, and I'm here with my co-host, the one and only Nick Barone. Hey, I am also here. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And we have a very special guest. This is uh, one of many of our Artist Spotlight series. And today we're going to talk to Jay Moulton. And uh, he's a fabulous artist. Uh, I think he's originally from uh, Upper East Coast kind of areas, New Hampshire, Vermont. Um, but he is in South Carolina, and he is bringing horror to South Carolina in a big way. Why don't you introduce yourself for um, our people? All right, to the one or a thousand people listening or watching, I'm Jay Moulton. I own South Carolina Horror Convention. I also am an artist. I own Two Horns Up Art, which is the best in horror work everywhere. So we're the only horror convention in South Carolina. Uh, but like I said, I come from New England originally, but I'm here to bring the horror to you. Right on. We can't wait for it. And um, it's SC Horror. It's that big giant poster behind you right there. And it is coming to where and when? It will be at the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center, September 16th, 17th. And I cannot wait to open the doors, man. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I, I, I took a look at the website. So um, if you Sorry are about sure, that. <laughs> I'm not a professional designer. Go to the website and just click on guests. He's got some fantastic guests that are already booked. And hey, cosplayer, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, but yeah, super amazing. Um, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Huge horror fan. What about you, Nick? I don't know if we've ever talked like horror horror. I, yeah, I do like horror. Um, I, you know, like every genre there's, there's good, there's bad. Um, <laughs> and there's ugly. There certainly is my dude. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like, uh, psychological horror. I also like, um, like kind of the old school slasher fix. I do think that some of that has gotten really tropey, but some of the originals are really fun to watch. Hey, what's up, nerd? Nerd Burger's in the crowd tonight. He's from South Carolina, I think, or at least he's talking about it. Because um, he says living in South Carolina <laughs> can be a horror all by itself. That's a fact. I mean, starting the show. It really is. Yeah, starting the show and looking. I mean, I'm, I'm tattooed and, you know, whatever. You know, I've got the horror thing going on, I guess. So uh, I hear you, uh, dude, because... When you go to the grocery store, sometimes you see the people just part as you walk through. <laughs> they don't know what to make of you right away. But, you know, after a while, though, they do embrace the crap out of you. Yeah, Evil Dead uh, cosplayer is um, one of my favorite. I love Sam Raimi. Uh, yeah, he's Evil Dead's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure that I'm liking what I've seen from Evil Dead Rise, but I'm hopeful. Did you see the uh, Evil Dead the remake? Yeah. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I didn't hate it, which says a lot because I'm, I mean, if it doesn't have Bruce Campbell in it. It took me, yourself, it took me know? till this year to watch it too, you know? Right. I had to wait. So, but I was pleasantly surprised. Right. So how about you? Have you seen it there, Nick? Oh, I, I have. I thought it was kind of mid. I'm not going to lie. You know, I don't want to crap on it if, if you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, no, no, no. I, want you, I you want you to enjoy. tell me what you really think, man. Right. What I really right. think, I, what I really think is, oh my gosh, I love the comedy. I, you know, that mix of dark comedy was just mm -hmm. so good in the originals. Well, you uh, think about it. I mean, if you if that was called Dead Evil or some other stuff, you know, if it wasn't called Evil Dead. You might like it better, much like the trope of or the the taboo of Halloween three without Myers being crapped on for so long. But if it was called just Season of the Witch, people would love it. I love that movie. H three is one of my favorite movies. That's interesting. That's interesting that you bring up that it's it's as simple as is where our mindset is when we're watching something. Oh yeah, um, you have to how, release yourself. how accepting we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a big yeah. trauma fan. Trust me. You know, my wife is. Uh, hit or miss with trauma so i'm a huge trauma nut so i've got some guests from trauma as well i had to mix that in so that's yeah cool. i have um i have no interest in in seeing like really horrible horror movies i mean some people like love them embrace them i i if it's schlocky i mean if it's like overly schlocky i love it because it's oh, yeah. supposed to be but if it's really someone's attempt to make a movie and they just they don't hit on any element at all other than sucking my time 
That's when I have a problem. <laughs> so you hated Halloween ends like I did then. <laughs> yeah. Who didn't? Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. I'm with you there. If if it's just bad, like it's not laughably bad, then I I, I think yeah, it's a waste of time. You know, I, like, I love those, yeah, right. I like schlocky is a word there. Yeah, I mean, I love Poultry Geist. I love Velocipaster and things like that. But I won't go watch Fast and the Furious or crap like that. An overproduced, oh, yeah. over just over commercialized, overproduced crap that it just has a twenty million dollar actor and no storyline. Nothing. I mean, like the the <clears> first one was decent because they were just criminals. But all of a sudden, they're superheroes in every movie, and I don't, I don't understand the concept. I love the comments. Halloween ends. Yep, it does. <laughs> you like your viewers, man. That's pretty cool. Thank Halloween you. Halloween ends sucks. That is a facts. Yes, and it does. cosplayer is a huge horror fan too. Oh, good. Good. This, this so. show will be right up your alley, my dude. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your artwork. Sure. Your artwork is, is very yeah, inspiring. <laughs> we'll get back to SC horror. Of course, yeah, that's like a book that out out I can just point and click because we're live. Yeah, let's let's talk about what what inspires you to do. So let explain to the, our um, audience what exactly your artwork is. Okay, well, what it, I'll tell you how it started and then how it evolved into this real quick. It's it's not like a huge story. So I'm someone who's renownedly cheap when it comes to promotion. So I'll get thousands and thousands of postcards and posters and stuff like that. And I've paid artists to do before, but I said, you know what? I've got no friends down here. I have to call my contacts up north because we just moved down here just over a year ago. And I've got to get posters for the show, like exclusive prints that I can give out to potential VIPs or just giveaways and things like that. I don't want to pay somebody to do that. I'm going to just try it on my own. And then poof, I made three posters, exclusives. And I said, man, I get some great ideas in my head. I really want to see these movies happen. So I actually evolved into, instead of just doing like a picture of zombies or some stuff. I love that one. That one's awesome. That one is actually uh, one of my favorites too. Uh, so I decided to start doing a movie post, like just a fake poster of SC Horror, like a fake VHS cover. And it came out so good in my opinion, and it's not in the slideshow, I'm sorry, but uh, it's yet to be revealed. So I started doing fake movie posters, of stories that I really want to see happen i mean i'd love to see you know aliens coming down to earth and kicking the crap out of people and i'd love to see my propaganda stuff like the devil's doobie i want to do something on weed um i've got story of satan which is my favorite piece um so if, when you see the posters it tells a story in of itself sometimes i'll throw a netflix on there or you know a vestron video for a vhs cover um, and i've done ones for movie companies too uh cd cover a couple dvd covers things like that um couple potential things coming down the pike but i've been an artist for roughly seven months so i've i've hit it pretty big pretty fast um and i've got a about 100 posters that i have in my in my repertoire and counting i did like two today so i mean it's it, it really started out as i'm too cheap to pay an artist to make a poster i want to try do it myself and probably fail miserably fall on my face right fall. right but i loved it so much and when you're a promoter there's so much stress that goes along with it you know, you have to figure out who's paying when, size of venue. I mean, you know the routine. It's a whole lot of crap that one person and a half, because my wife's a professor too, so she's not full time on this. Um, I just decided, you know, I'm going to try it. And it's great therapy. So it's probably my therapy. And people have started saying, I want to make this into a movie. I really love this. I put families in the, in the posters. I've done commissions for, you know, making families their own movie posters, whether they oh, want to be cool idea. massacre or they want to be in a movie I make up. So I've done tons of commissions. Oh. I've done sports cards for uh, like lacrosse kids. Um, you know, list goes on. And on. I do playing cards or trading cards. I do, um, but mostly my, my big love is I'm a big movie buff. So I, these are posters that I want to see happen because I hate the way movies are now. And I don't want to sound like they were great back in the day. No, they sucked then too, uh, for the most part. <laughs> They, they really did. So if there was something that was an alternate universe Hollywood of where, I guess you could say, where these movies would be made, they'd be totally over the top. Um, I've done like 70s exploitation all the way up to just gross, you know, slimy horror movies to sci-fi pieces. So that's just how it evolved. But it's, uh, it's, it's getting great with commissions and with uh, people actually wanting to make them into movies so far. Hmm. And you you mentioned that like people have wanted to uh, make them into movies. Have you had any that were turned into movies? Yes, um, I've well, being seven months, it's very tough to make one between then. But I did a movie poster for Be Your Own um, Hero Productions, 
called Sinister Cinema. That's in movie theaters in, in North Carolina right now. It's on Amazon Prime. Also, I'm on IMDb for that. And then uh, I've got a local filmmaker that is writing the script to Call Girl Carnage right now. That one right there. So he'll be making that into a film. Um, and then it's really just up, you know, I've, I've got a few contacts that have uh, off the cuff really just, you know, want me to take a crack at some of their DVD covers and movie posters. So things are going very well so far. But the commissions are great. Everybody wants to be on a movie poster. It's a great keepsake for your house. So if you're like, you know. Amazing. I love that yeah. idea. Right. So, I mean, I can take, you know, give me 10 pictures. I can create a gnarly poster, whether you want to, even if you want to be in a sci-fi flick, I mean, I could do that too. I mean, most, I've done a noir piece like on the screen there. Yeah, uh, I love that. Because I'm a huge fan of Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. The old radio show, Johnny Dollar. So I did a recreation. Re uh, you know, then I've done a Grindhouse, like Ladies of Lust and things like that. I've got a lot of weird ass titles, but, um, you know, that's just, that's just how it happened. And it's I've been pretty successful at it. I'm uh, very, very happy of the direction it's going in and, I, I love, while I love SC horror, I mean, this is my true calling. Like, I really enjoy this so much where it's not work. All right. So that's, that's kind of the artwork in a nutshell. Now you can either get your artwork through your website, through your Yeah, Facebook I would say page. as of right now, I, I hate websites cause I'm, I, I'm old. And I think, I even think websites are kind of crap. I mean, I've got the SC Horror one. You can email me through there. You can go on Facebook to Two Horns Up Art. I do have uh, stuff on tpublic.com. You can get anywhere from like stickers, magnets, T-shirts to posters and everything else. But if you want the real deal from me, signed, et cetera, just go on Two Horns Up Art on Facebook or Instagram or whatever social Twitter or social media that you got, and you can just order them from me. Or you can commission me, and it, usually it's a two-week turnaround. So I, I, I noticed in going through some of your social media that, that you do um, attend comic cons and other <laughs> yeah. other conventions. And yeah. You set up. You have actually have a booth, right? Yeah, I do. I, I usually set up at shows um, in two formats. Most of the time, it's an eight foot table, <clears throat> unless you're uh, excuse me, <clears throat> unless you're kind of in a, in a small place. It's a six foot table. I fit both banners behind me. I mean, I'm at my dining room table now i can fit them both behind me and i've got art on one side sc horror on the other so we're promoting this show my wife's always in cosplay dressing up she does amazing characters she's actually in sorority three poster as the main the, the supreme witch which is awesome uh thank god she let me use her picture because you know one she's hot and two you know the, it works great she's a witch anyway um so uh we set up we tell everybody about the artwork we tell them about the show we, we we're out there we're about uh, I think booked until about two or three weekends. We've got something straight from now till September. Uh, so we're everywhere. We're in movie theaters. We're at uh, restaurants, pubs, bars, uh, everywhere. I'll promote a porta potty for me. We just did haunts the last uh, two weekends. Um, so I've been at several different haunts. And I mean, we're everywhere. I'll be wallpapering uh, University of South Carolina in the summer. So it's it's a lot of work for uh, a 47 year old dude. It really what? is. <laughs> I mean, I'm a citizen. I want to be done with this in a few years. <clears throat> so are you going to be at Con Carolinas and Quiet Room? Yeah, I wouldn't miss that. That was actually, it's funny. Oh, awesome. I had, um, I owned eight shows up north. I owned Vermont Comic Con, Green Mountain Comic Expo, Rock Comic Expo, multiples of each. Um, and I swore off conventions because up there, it is the most cutthroat, backstabbing. It's the worst scene ever, man. I mean, because there, there's... It, that's where Comic Cons, besides San Diego, really truly started. It was like Basement of Radisson in Boston. I was there when I was a kid, learned the business. Uh, my uncle, you know, like the, the dude that took me under his wing as I was just trying to buy comics as a kid, taught me the business. And, um, you know, so I've, I've been around legends my whole life. Um, but coming down here, I said, you know, I swore off even going to conventions. Never want to go to one again. Con Carolinas was my first that I went to set up. Uh, and I enjoyed it so much. You know, I, I mean, I've, I've talked essentially to Ray and I've talked to everybody else. I mean, everybody there, everybody that is part of that has become a really good friend and a good supporter. And uh, honestly, down here, it's, it's a different game. People want to help you and they want to see you succeed because it helps them succeed. They get it. There's enough pie for everybody to enjoy. Right, and I right. love that about down here. And that's why I'm proud to be. I'm so proud of it that I really work my, my anus off every day to make sure SC Horror is worth going to, because I really want to give back to the people that have been so supportive so far. And I usually BS stuff like that, but that's totally legit, man. That's, it's, it's a great place to be down here. All right, so let's let's jump back into SC Horror for a minute. <clears throat> Can I jump 
Yeah, Scooch. Um, how big of a footprint will you have in the, at the convention center? We're going to have the entire downstairs. I'm, I'm not sure we've been to Soda City yet, um, mm. but they they use the upstairs too. The, the downstairs has about a thirty three thousand square foot room, a really long hallway that could fit about twenty more booths, and then rooms all the way around the corner. So it's like a long hallway wraps right around an L shape, but you get the main room, the green room, then rooms around. So we, we're going to have roughly fifty thousand or so square feet. Uh, altogether, we've got a two-room haunt taking up two rooms. Of course, we got the the green room for the guests. Then we've got the huge expo hall in the hallway. So, uh, so right now we're about eighty percent full. It's only February, which is nice. It's good problems to have. Beautiful. You know? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, people really want to see this happen. When I started, I didn't think we'd sell one ticket. We've you know we've we've sold some tickets already, which and a good amount too. So um, it, now, it's. Do you it's yeah, fun do thing. you use like Eventbrite for your tickets, or I, I have an Eventbrite account that I somewhat do, but I use Ticket Sauce. Usually, they've been the most valuable so far to everything I've done. Uh, I've worked with Chris from Ticket Sauce for uh, the last decade. Uh, he's always paid me on time, so I kind of trust him. Um, gotcha. if you Eventbrite, you can get them there as well, but it's just an I, I can use ten ticket companies. But this is another to me. It's another service, and they'll just pimp it out a little bit but I've really never needed Eventbrite as a uh, promoting format. Uh, it's, it's just so much red tape with them. Um, I mean, they're, they're cool and everything. I, I have an account for SC horror with them, but it's, it's really, I don't expect more than maybe a hundred tickets to sell through them. You know, I'm not paying to, I'm not, I'm not paying for extra promotion from them. There's no way. So the, the chat's asking how much the tickets are. Okay. So if you want to come to our show, I, I, would say buy your tickets in advance. At the door, it's 15 for a day, 30 for the weekend. If you buy them in advance, it is 13 for a day and 20 for the whole damn weekend. You wow. can come have a blast for the weekend because I am a dad of three. I've got a wife, I've got three kids. Um, I want to be able to take my kids somewhere. And we just went to Mad Monster, and I don't know if anybody cares if I talk crap about that. Uh, 50 bucks a day to get in there. Now, yeah, see, expensive. You, you could go, you could do that, and that's cool, man. Like we went. But if you're bringing your family, your three kids, that's 250 bucks. Then you're going to pay for autographs. Then you're going to pay for food. What do the what does the artist and vendor really get from you? Nothing. Right. Your money's gone by the time it's you gone. get to the vendors. Yeah. Right. And that's been my philosophy <clears throat> through this whole promoting time I've done over the last decade or so is that I have to make my shows affordable because my vendors and artists are paying for tables. They're the backbone of my show. Those are the ones whose backs I have to scratch the most. Sure. Because then they won't be back the next year if I don't. So that is your backbone of your show. I'm a, I'm a fellow artist. I'm a creator. I have a published comic book on top of all this stuff. I've got a radio show on top of all this stuff. So my goal is to make it so the artists make money, the vendors make money. Sure, the celebs will make some money anyway. That's just going to happen naturally. But also the ticket holder will have that money to spend, not just on the tickets, because 20 for the weekend's great. I mean, right. It's cheap. Incredible. So I, I don't see this as a get rich quick scheme. This is, I'm doing this to do it. I'm not doing it for, uh, was a, a short round say fortune and glory, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this for the love of the game, man, because I love the area. I love horror. I love my art and I'm going to have a booth there, man. I'm going to sell my stuff too, of course. So, I mean, uh, any guests like Chuck, <laughs> now we do have Michael Myers with Tyler Maine who played Michael Myers and Rob Zombie's Halloween. We have James O'Barr who created the crow, which I, as a Gen Xer, I I'm completely that. stoked yeah. about. We've got Super my buddy, exciting. John. Oh yeah. And he doesn't do a lot of shows, man. Uh, John Russo, who co-created Night of the Living Dead, he wrote it, uh, Romero directed it. So he, he also did Return of the Living Dead. We've got them. I've got Bill Diamond, a Jim Henson Emmy award-winning puppeteer, bringing the man eating plant from Little Shop of Horrors. I've got Tiffany Shepis, who's been in over 120 horror movies. I've got uh, a couple of trauma people, Jason Yakinen. I've got Melissa Cowan, who's in The Walking Dead. Uh, Dacre Stoker, who lives in South Carolina, who's actually the great-grandnephew of Bram Stoker. Oh, yeah. He comes to our show all the time. Right. So... Really great lineup. Um, I know there's a couple I'm missing, and I apologize to them if they're actually watching and I forgot your name. But we have 10 different guests. I've got a couple to tease out later that may just be splitting a table one day Saturday, one day Sunday. But they're local legends. Um, they're also – they've they've made movies for Hollywood that you would know. Uh, they just happen to live in the area. Uh, and I had not known that until about last week. So we've got a – for a year one, I'd say we've got a very competitive guest list Sure, we get yeah. blasted from the usual nodheads on social media that'll say, you don't have Nev Campbell and Freddy Krueger, you're not going to be right. a good show. Well, F you, dude, because, you know, this is a show for families. We're family friendly. We charge very little. 
you know, I, I mean, there's there's shows like Mad Monster and all well and good. Good for right. them. Make a billion. I don't care. But when you it's have a different show, I can't look at a family and say fifty dollars each, please. I'd feel like a real shyster. And there's no way that's ever going to happen. My show. It, if I hit capacity, I'll just say, sorry, guys, come back later. But yeah. I want to show that families can afford because, you know, if they're paying just the gas to get here, that's rough, man. So right. I want kids to enjoy it because they're the next generation of con goers. They're the ones that are going to pay. They're the ones that are going to take over my show someday. I hope, um, I don't, I don't ever want to look at a kid and say, well, you know what? Your parents couldn't pay 50. I give away tickets to kids. I see all the time because I want them to enjoy things. I want my kids to enjoy things. Um, because growing up and growing up now, man, everybody's so inundated with being their phones. I'm not, I'm guilty too, man. You know, but when you can go someplace and make it, have have memories with your family and experience it for very little, it's literally a cover of my backside. <laughs> so, right. um, and get buy some nice art. Uh, you know, so that's what we do, and that's that's our mission is to be different. We also work with uh, Ronald McDonald House Columbia, uh, several others that I've not nice. end yet, so I can't really announce them. But we we always attach charities to our show. We always do something cool. We're working on a blood drive. I've always done that in my shows because who doesn't want to see blood drive at a horror show, you know? And it's just it's just an extra added bonus. So right. we'll have the best in lotteries, masks, costumes, everything else, but at a very inexpensive price. So to answer your question in a very long roundabout way, 20 bucks for the weekend, we'll get you in. That's the worth that's worth the ticket. That's Boom. very cool. I love the fact that you're like so passionate about this to the point where like you're willing to take even just a profit cut. To- in order to make sure that you have like get more out. people that can come. I make a buck yeah. off this show, man. I mean, the truth be told, I mean, not, not to like, I'm not some altruistic dude that hates money. You know, like we came down right. here and we retired. So like my wife's a professor and there's the military and all that. I did these shows like I was done. And then said, you know, we don't really need to make a living off this. So let's just make it happen and have fun with it for once. Cause I was never able to have fun with my eight other shows. I had to always stress about the buck. And even though we didn't charge a crap ton up there, we had to make sure that we, my goal was to more or less to have fun at one show. That, that's my goal, just to have fun this time and enjoy it, enjoy the process, enjoy creation and building it and making it a good thing and having the reputation of, hey, you know what? We may not be Mad Monster. We're not, we're SC Horror. Totally different game, man. And, and I'll show right. you when they come in, it's not just a bunch of drunk people trying to hit on like old 80s celebrities. It's a great family friendly atmosphere. We've got the ET bike from the movie. We've got so many other props and cool things and giants of the industry, James O'Barr, John Russo. I mean, you, those are two guys that shaped my entire childhood. Can we hit 80s, 80s what? <laughs> we can't hit any celebrities. Can we hit on, <laughs> are we, that's no. Sean saying we can't hit on that? You should, yeah, you should Elvira's off treat limits, them like bro. people. I guess it could, dude. Give them dignity and respect, just like anybody else. Horror, yeah. I mean, of course, people are selling horror items. We've got uh, local, well, for one vendor that I can pimp out, uh, my friend Cassie owns Wretched Collections in Lexington, in the same town I live in, uh, and she's bringing ma- trick or treat studio masks. She's bringing costumes. There's a lot of horror vendors. Yeah, we will have a bunch of horror stuff. We've got some toy vendors, mask vendors. So, I mean, we'll have comics and anime there, too. I mean, we're going to represent all pop culture. We're just more horror-centric. We're not against comics. I mean, I've got a comic sleeve, dude. The comics are my life. Uh, But I love comics, and I want to make sure that they're represented. Everybody will be represented. I think I've got uh, some some prop dudes for, like, fake swords and stuff. Um, But, I mean, we've got about 200 to 300 tables total throughout the whole place. So we're filling them. So there will be items for you to buy for sure. Yeah. Hey, speaking real quick about comics, you said that you are like you publish a comic. There's um, one that you make. I've written one that's published called Hush. It's a very nasty grindhouse vigilante story that is not safe for kids. <laughs> it's it's an experiment in uh, science meets horror. Um, kind of like if the crow had a um, well, he's not really dead either, so I can't really say the crow. But um, it, it's. Sort of like, I guess it, it's a crow looking piece where it's very dark, gritty, and grindhouse type pulpy uh, about a, a medically enhanced person who tr- had a wonder drug to save their life, which turned most of their senses wild and inside out. And his rage of horror and controlling himself and not quite hulking, but more like just being able to see, being able to do things, learning how to adjust to this new life 
trying to figure out what the hell happened because he lost his memory as well. So we did that book, uh, what, eight years ago? <laughs> eight or nine years ago now. It's been so long, man. 2015, I think that came out. Um, but I, I really just stuck to my guns being promoted up there because up there, man, it's a different ball game. You got to pay 70, 80,000 a venue. It's harsh down here. Super cheap, you know, maybe 15 grand gets a show done for you. Uh, tops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it, it's something I've wanted to re revisit once in a while, but I've had been doing so much work with this, that it's just, this is, this is everything. Like, I don't, I, I even my buddies up north, like, you got to get the writing bug again and write some of your stories. I'm actually writing story of Satan screenplay right now. So it's, uh, the, the chick with the gun, like Grindhouse Awesome. Yes. As Rose McGowan as Cherry Darling. Yes. One of my favorites. Right. Big, big time Grindhouse guy. I mean, not just Grindhouse, the Grindhouse Tarantino Rodriguez. Just but I mean, that, that. Look for stuff like, you know, Foxy Brown, TNT Jackson and stuff like that. Hell Comes to Harlem. Uh, you know, all sorts of great old uh, grindhouse flicks. I mean, you can find if you Google um, cosplayer, right? It's, it's like this small on my screen. Um, if you if you just Google B movies on YouTube, full B movies full, you could spend years watching that, and they're sure. so good. And I, that's my go-to when I'm home working. Flip on B movies full and just watch some debauchery happen while I'm doing my work. <laughs> That sounds amazing. The one notable difference that I see between maybe SC Horror and Con Carolinas is Con Carolinas carries the nonprofit tag. We do yep. this because we love to do this. And it sounds like you do it for the very same reasons. You're not looking to make a buck. You're looking to provide entertainment and enjoyment for um, a, a group of great people. Yeah, see, the, the and, main difference for me is like with a nonprofit, I think you have to have a committee. I don't know enough yes. people to put on a board. I know nobody. <laughs> so yeah, you, you I'm, I'm for profit. Sure. I'm just for little profit, you know? Yeah. Just to just speak by. Pay for the right. gas. And we'll do, I mean, we'll, do fine. We'll, make, we'll make good cash, but, uh, you know, I, I don't yeah. want to sit there and, man, I, I'd feel like I'd feel like such a, a heel if I was charging $50 a day like some of these shows, man. It's just, it's they're so out of touch with families. They're so out of touch with reality. That they really think people can afford fifty dollars plus one hundred twenty-five for Kruger signature, you right. know. Ner I mean, the Nerd average person made a good point earlier. He was saying that, you know, with it being so close to Dragon Con, it's still affordable. You could still actually go to SE Horror even if you're going to Dragon Con. So, and that's, mean, that's a great point. That's a great point because that's the exact thing that I've been saying. Because let's face it, there's a show every weekend down here. Up north, it's kind of spread out few and far between so we would promote maybe at two or three shows a year i'm promoting at two or three shows in the next like week or two right. um so you know th it there's no con season, market so. up there yeah con season's a full swing so yeah there, there's so much to do man but i mean you that's the thing there's so much to do there's even shows on my date that i work with like power comic con i'm going to be there in a couple weeks and then they have a one day show and it's on my saturday and then my buddy larry is gonna that i met uh he's a Clemens, North Carolina, doing the vintage comic on the Sunday. And they call me like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, we knew your date, this and this all the time we get. Like, cool. There's enough for everybody, dude. Tons. I have no ill will to any of you guys. I love all you guys. Like, we just right. we'll all share the pie together, man. And just if you need a vendor that can't do my show, can we do a one day? I'll, I'll pass them off to you. You know, work together. And that's that's how we do it. But yeah, that way, if you go to even Soda City the month before my show or Dragon Con, 20 bucks is that comes out of the ATM standard. So. Right. I mean, it's we try to make That's it one so, button, right? You don't have to decide. Oh man, I have to do this show, but then, oh my God, there's a big show here and the big show there. I never want to be a big show. That's I will close down before we become a big show. Then that's that's a fact. Like I only want to have maybe, you know, fifteen hundred to three thousand people in a weekend. If we get seven thousand, I'm shutting down. You know, I want it to stay intimate because I want people to, with the experience with the show. You don't want to stand in line if you're paying all this money just to stand in line all day. Right. It's like just go to DMV for that stuff, you know, right. go to, you know, you, you can come to the show and, and have a minute conversation too, with Tyler Mayne, ask John Russo about writing Night of the Living Dead, talk to James O'Barbell, the crew, get a commission. He's going to have original stuff there. James O'Barbell of original pieces at the show. Um, talk to Tiffany Sheppis about how to break into B movies and, and uh, standard movies. Talk to different people that write books and do things, things that you aspire to do or that you've always wanted to learn, especially and that's the big kid value is that when I was a kid, I wanted to be an author. 
And being around those comic book writers as a kid really inspired the hell out of me uh, and taught me how to like really just take my lumps when the business started to hit you on the head. And it'll do yeah. that every day. Uh, so it, it's it's never just something that I take lightly. I really want I really want kids to grow up with the awesome memories of SC Horror or Con Carolinas because I know you guys care about your crowds too. And I re- that I love your show. Uh, I really when I got there, I'm like, man, this is actually ins- just making me have some faith in the community again. So it's it's always been my favorite show on the schedule. Um, which it's is all it's, it's, it's it's so good. It's super enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can walk from one side to the other and go, wow, I'm gonna go broke just buying stuff from artists and artists. I buy a lot of art. <laughs> I buy a lot of books. I buy shirts. I buy things from everybody. You know, I I very rarely get signatures. You know, I mean. Yeah. I, I, I'm the same I got zero. At, well, besides my buddy waited in line for Kruger for me and offered to do that. Like, sure, I need a third one. Why not? I need. I had a glove to get signed. Um, but when I went Sean there, Sean was saying that he was waited it. at Walker Stalker Con. He Ugh. waited five hours for a signature. Yeah, exactly. Five hours. You can just buy it on eBay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, my my wife met Devin Sawa at, at Mad Monster. She was all fan growing up. She's like, you know, grew up in the '90s. Because she's a child, you know. <laughs> and, and, and it's not only just the time spent; it's the the money too. It really is. I, mean, it, I, I went to like a, maybe a couple of years ago. I went to the uh, Oddities and Curiosities Expo, and there was the Jeeper, Jeepers Creepers um, truck, the van, yeah. you know, um, and the guy. And I was like, "Sure, yeah, I'll take a picture." He's like fifty bucks. And, I'm like, and then you started giving me package deals where I could get in the vehicle. I oh. could hold like a knife. I mean, <laughs> just cra- like it went up to like 150 bucks. And I'm oh like, my uh, gosh. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I was with someone that was a huge fan. So I was like, yeah, okay. And I bought it for her. But, you know, it's it's crazy because you're not only spending time, but you're spending so much money on that kind of stuff where – I would much rather go through the vendor room and just buy stuff that is amazing. Like the artistry that a lot of these people have in these vendor rooms is just off the, you know, off the scale. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, from, from an artist standpoint, when you're standing behind a table and you set up, you've, you've got this glow about you and a smile and a nice presence. Like, okay, I'm going to sell some crap this weekend. And then right. when you see Robert England, Robert England over there and, you know, Kane Hodder over there and some other guy over there, well, hell, I guess I showed up for nothing. You know, I feel bad for uh, a med monster. And, and I'll talk a little bit of crap about them because I, I don't care. Um, I'll just tell it like it is. They're, most of the vendors I spoke to aren't even from the Carolinas. They're yeah. from Chicago, Vegas and everything else. And you know what the problem with that is? The money goes away from the Carolinas. Creating right, commerce down here, right, creating commerce down here is essential to the community. I mean, working with charities or I didn't see one charity besides scares or cares and they go to every show, whatever. I'm talking about really somebody that's there all the time in your community. You know, that's essential when you do business. I mean, at least if you have a heart, that's essential. Um, but right. seeing the money just disappear kind of hurt my feelings when I was there. I'm like nobody's from here, man. Very few. So I bought from the ones that are from here. Um, but 99% of our guys are from here. I want the money to stay right. in South Carolina. I live here. I pay taxes here. My kids go to school here. You know, we, we work here. We are in the community. I want the money to stay here because I, I like schools and, and roads and, you know, emergency services, you know, because right. who the hell needs that? You know, let's just move all the money right. up. I'm gonna, but I don't like the, it's kind of like a bunch of scavengers coming and picking the bones and flying away. And I don't like that. So, just about everybody at our show is from the Carolinas, north or south. I don't think so far. I don't think of any vendors besides maybe one from Tennessee. That's it. Yeah, I Go mean, join. we do get vendors from the surrounding states, but it's right. only because they're so. I mean, they've been with this con for so. I mean, we're the longest running convention in in the Carolinas. Sure. So people come because they've come for years and years. Yeah, I mean, if you, got, if you I got, love. The, you get an author from Georgia, it's different than like saying, oh, I've got the makeup company from Vegas. Right. You no, know, this, sure. this is the Southeast region needs to stay in the Southeast region as far as the money goes. You know, so right. if you're if you're if you're making good money for your community or the artists in your community or the authors, any creator 
or vendor even for comics or whatever, that's going right. to just be recycled around the community and it's going to give people more chance to spend uh, and not just run away, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just so, it's just so bad, man. Like it's, it's so, it's actually sad that places like Dragon Con and I've been there many times, um, but more Mad Monster and, you know, some of the New York Comic Cons and things like they Fan Expo, they turn into such money sucks. It's, it's just, it's, it's losing the, the love and the flavor of a real show. Uh, they really, they really water down the experience for the average person because they pay to, they pay a lot to get in and a lot to stand in line all day long. You can't, you have to pick and choose who you want to meet, pick and choose what panel you want to go to because you're right. going to stand for at least six hours of the day, and then maybe go to after party and spend even more money to wait in line. I mean, it's just, it's garbage. It's not my brand. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying, and I think that North Carolina and South Carolina has that community and nerd base that will support anything local. I mean, right. they, 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 mm -hmm. they just flock to it, you know? And I mean, you could speak to that, Nick, with just the amount of people that are in your world, the LARPing world, you know, I mean, and the people that support that world as far as vendors and, and everything like that. It's just a community that is ripe for the picking and they love what we do. They love what, you know, and I'm not saying we as in Con Carolinas. I'm saying we as far as every show that comes, you know, like what's this weekend? Is it Retcon in Gary? I don't know. There's so many cons going on right now. and But they're so supported by so, so many people. And even the little small intimate cons, uh, it's a, a thing of beauty um to be able to go to a small intimate con and just be able to network and talk to people and buy amazing artwork because just um just like there's so many fans there's also an equal number if not way more vendors and artists and artisans that that create all this beautiful things sure. all of these beautiful things for us to, to um spend our money Money on. Yeah, it's, it's like when it's yeah, like when people are buying stuff, you know, that you want to make sure they get something unique. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And I spend my money vendor always like because you've been on the show, I will buy your stuff. Ben Marabelli, it's another artist spotlight we did. I bought his stuff. Um, anyone that it, like I see at our show that that I walk by or engages with me. I want to support them because they're right. local artists that, you know, they paid for that space. They need to make their money back. Right. And this I mean, trust me, we, we buy candles, we buy everything. I mean, you know, anything that somebody makes there, every, every vendor that I've had in my shows up North, I bought something from each one of them. I've got buckets of stuff still that I brought down here. I love that. Yeah. And I, I, but yeah. I, I love the styles and I mean, I have my own style. I'm a big fan of unlovely Frankenstein. He does a lot of work uh, that's of, See, I do stuff that's not fan art like he does. He does uh, known properties. I do right. what's in my messed up head. Um, but we have this mutual respect of, you know, we both do posters. Uh, he does more the propaganda type or the grindhouse type. I do the, the movie poster version. So, I mean, we've we've learned it's camaraderie, too, among the artists. And there, there's such a good base down here. Uh, had I known this, I you know, I would have had no hesitation starting the show. Um, and where we're at is just amazing. Like people really love it. And, it. and it's because we're in a community that agrees with keeping it local or appreciating different things. I mean, there's so many craft beer places down here. I mean, we, I, we support them. You know, right. there's so many local businesses that are worth supporting. And we're just hoping to be lucky enough to be mentioned among them. That's all. Right. No, no egos, no crap like that. So I have a fantastic idea. Sure. Okay. So when you get your movie made, the one that's right behind you, uh, what's it called again? The the one with the silhouette? Call Girl Carnage, yeah. Call, call Girl Carnage. You need to have Graveyard Boulevard do, do lay down track. some tracks for it. Hell I, yeah. I, I, oh. it's, you know, it's it's funny. I've not really talked to Ray much uh, lately. I've been so busy. But I do follow Graveyard Boulevard. I'm, I'm, and I've been meaning to message you. I'm like, dude, you know, I need to go to your next show or something. I love that they've stuff. Got, they've got like four shows coming up. And um, it's awesome. Their new, their new CD, their new, uh, 
product is amazing. They practiced here at the uh, Batcave Studios yeah. um, all year long and leading up to that record. And so I heard it from like barely anything, but, you know, strumming a little, little bit, a few chords on a guitar to something that just is mind blowing. So, yeah, I would love to see um, them do a, See, a I would, that, that would be that would be my honor to have them anywhere on the soundtrack. It'd be awesome. Yeah, and I and I have, I have a ton of respect for Ray. Uh, he's one of the first people I met in this whole, in this Southeast Comic Con, I guess you call it community convention community. Um, you know, he's one of the first people I met and was one of the most welcoming people I've ever met. Yeah, uh, I've been around this business forever, man. And there's not I can probably count on my on my hand. I have a couple fingers left over who's welcoming up north, uh, but. There's been no shortage of awesome people like like Dave and Rick that do the Charlotte show have been sweethearts to us. Excellent. Uh, everybody. Great I mean, show I, too. I can name a hundred people that have just been fantastic. The people from the haunts around here uh, in Elgin and Lexington and uh, Leesville and everything else. I mean, people have been fantastic. Even even our local Lowe's grocery store has been posting my postcards and stuff everywhere in their bar every day. Oh you know? wow! You know, so we, we're we're out there we're everywhere, but. It's a lot of legwork, but it's also creating relationships in the community, which I love. I mean, I'm not a social, you know, ama socially amazing dude. You know, I do things my way. I just, I just try to be as nice as possible. I may right. look weird, but I mean no ill will to anybody. I work with everybody that wants to work together. Hi, Ray. Thanks for up, joining Ray? us for five minutes. What's or up, dude? You have. I no, to her. Oh yeah, that, that's he's that's, talking to his wife. It's my wife. Yeah, oh, and, uh, she's the co-host of the show, but she had to work tonight, so oh, got you. one of the co-hosts. So yeah, um, right on, man. So I do. I got a question for you. So I, I, first off, you have this movie coming out. I'm super excited. I'm stoked to see it. Uh, hypothetically speaking, if I were to like do a react video to it, would you have me demonetized? You know, asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> Dude, you could you could MST three K the crap out of if you want. You can just give me an honest review. You can tell me how much of you know the poster is way better than the movie is what I want to hear. <laughs> okay, I will write that down. Let me make a note. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I have I have a few friends down here that go. You know what? One of these days, somebody's going to see your poster and say we got to make this movie, and they're going to be in a big studio. And I'm going to say no, <laughs> no. I don't want to. If you're an independent dude that want, or or girl that wants to do one of my posters and make a new movie that's the spirit of the movie it's never supposed to be a blockbuster it's supposed to be gritty it's supposed to be independent it's supposed to be grindhouse it's supposed to be a throwback <clears throat> i mean if, if they want to throw me 20 million i'll sell one of them and then just say you know bye oh, that's it yeah and then the rest of them get funded by me right because my, my other dream is to open up an actual old school grindhouse theater you know but in South Carolina, they, I don't even think, uh, well, I can't say that in the air. Um, <laughs> there's, there's things that are kind of backwards here. And some things just aren't accepted as others would be, I guess, is the nice way to say it on the air. Yeah, my wife just went to watch a movie the other weekend in, in Lexington, North Carolina. And nice. it was, she sent me a picture and it was the like tiny most intimate, like really old school, red drapes, you know, mm -hmm. like super cool, which would be perfect for something like that. But what, what I'm leading up to is you got to get this crap made because we have a film festival at Con Carolinas that we would love to have you, I'm sure. Yeah, I, mean, I would love to, if anybody's out there and if you're, uh, you know, got a few ducats in your pocket, I've got this gnarly poster that'll come up on the screen at some point sorority of satan if you want to get this made for me i'll be happy to help you write the screenplay i'm writing it right now it's one that deserves to be in the theater so close oh, the devil's yep, doobie yep that's my propaganda poster for weed there's my uh missing that's my fave yeah that that one's actually one of my faves too i was stoked when i got that that's one that's being made into a movie um there we go. That's a good biker movie that because I know nothing about motorcycles, but I know what like badasses on bike look, look, look like. So that's kind of an old school one. That's a haunted one. That's that's one that's uh, just about possession. Uh, I had a, uh, people got so mad when I put the rosary beads in that one. <laughs> like people, oh, wow. they, just, they had it in a bunch. That's an old school 50s, you know, greaser film. 
yeah. Johnny Switchblade. Yep, that's actually, uh, I, I had a fan about four years old that bought this poster, Hospital from Hell. Her dad was a vendor next to me. You know, pick out whatever you want. And she picked that one out. I was pretty, pretty stoked about that. But yeah, Sorority of Satan is, I have a three part to it, three part poster. I've got a fourth one coming out in the next, I don't know, six months. Um, there's a second one, yeah. Oh. Right, when you put them all together, my wife had this great day. You put them all together, there's going to be a certain symbol when you connect all the posters together. But uh, it could be a four part movie. I mean, it could be an hour each, but I've got the story in my head and I'm putting it on paper. Uh, it's pretty messed up. It's got uh, satanic rituals. It's got witches. It's got covens. It's got uh, lots of blood and a lot of uh, things you shouldn't talk about on the air. <laughs> well, we've got we've See? got people that are part of our community here at uh, the Blue Skirt Boys Network um, and Con Carolinas that um, are filmmakers. They're active filmmakers. So you know, you you never know what's going to happen. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, they can they can look at something else I have here and go. Actually, that would be better. I'll do that one. Right. I've got, you know, I'm bringing so many out there. Um, my, my most frequent question when people look at my work is, "When does when did this come out?" I have, or man, some. I think I heard of this movie. Like, you never have, dude. But you know what? If you want to buy it, it would look great in your commode. You know. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've got a, my wife put up a whole gallery of my stuff, which is kind of embarrassing, but it's pretty cool at the same time. Um, but there's so many different kinds. I mean, for every moviegoer, unless you're a child, I don't do kids films. I've done kids posters with like their dog and them on it uh, in a movie, like Adventures of and cool right. old school Nickelodeon throwbacks. Uh, but if you want something that's grindhouse over the edge, something that's got a really catchy poster. I mean, when you look, when you go to the video store or back in the day, or you go to like some comic store that has VHS or whatever, or if you're streaming online. You always see crappy, crappy, crappy posters. Like I'm, I'm critical of my work, but I'm also critical of others. And when I see the work, I go, man, I'm gonna, I want to recreate that. What the hell? I don't know what they were doing there. You know, it, it, there's, there used to be like the Ken Kellys of the world, the John Allens of the world that would create the most amazing artwork. Right. Star Wars, E.T., Jaws. You know these posters, uh, Halloween, and iconic things. And now we just kind of have an actor doing this thing with their name. Right. Right. You know, or doing the whole like, you know, just dumb pose, you know, because their name is The Rock or something like that. And that's all you right. get. So you even artists, even artists now are getting gypped because there is no creation when it comes to posters for the most part. There's a few exceptions. But when you go see 80 for Brady, that was a fun poster to do. You know, no. And no it's like it's four right. women on that. Yeah. Right. I mean. So there's you want you want to know what's going on in the story. You want to know something visual that goes, whoa, look at this messed up thing. Or look at this, you know, that's really this, sweet. This is what I attribute it to. Like um, way back when, and I'm talking like maybe early night, late 80s, early 90s, I worked for a, a, a adult film distribution um, center. And the thing that would sell the the videos were the box covers mm -hmm. if i mean it could be nothing i mean there could be crap inside of this box but if the box cover was hot mm -hmm. it was it sold like crazy right like i grew up in the 80s um i was born in 75 so i lived through betamax or eight millimeter even betamax vhs laser disc dvd hd dvd blu-ray streaming everything else so when i would go to the store as a kid um, I would look for the covers, you know, like I remember seeing the cover to, oh God, Fright Night and going, whoa, that blew me away. That totally blew me away. Or the cover to, um, hell, I mean, e even, uh, Puppet Master, like Full Moon Fever was just crazy. Uh, somebody says, I'm going to start the satanic panic of the eighties. That's my goal. That hey, is totally my go. goal. I mean, I, I wear this, I wear this ring out, you know, I wear, I wear like Frankenstein. I've got, you know pentagram i got all this other stuff i i wear these constantly yeah. like you know i'm out there and you know people see this thing oh my god yeah so you should I bring back the uh the satanic oh, panic for sure like as I'm a person like, please oh sorry. i'm trying like hell dude no it's okay i'm trying like hell to bring it back i mean i, I even want to call churches and say there's thousands of you around me can you protest me please can you come to my show please right. protest me? <laughs> that's the thing yeah i'm a, I'm a person who plays D D, and it has just been like too easy for me recently you know like not enough stigma not enough people protesting against right. it we gotta bring that back <laughs> yeah i've, I've actually mom 
Stifler's started mom made a great <laughs> point. She said, because judging book by a cover is just what people actually do. So, sure. That's very true. Totally. I mean, it, when I see a dude in khakis, polo, and boat shoes, I run the other way. You know, they're the real demons. They're the ones that, like, will sell your insurance and take a skim off the top of it, or they'll, they'll underpay their employees or, or tell yeah. them they can't pay for this much of their medical leave or that they have to work on their birthdays and, you know, they're – things like that. Those are the people, the stuff shirts are the ones that I've never been a part of. It's never been my image and it's never been my thing to screw people out of money, uh, happiness, <laughs> and enjoyment. I mean, I've been right. in entertainment since, since I was, I don't know, since I can remember. You've been in entertainment since entertainment actually meant something. Probably when dirt meant entertainment. Right. Together. But no, I mean, like back in the day, I miss video stores. I was a video store manager for a couple places during college. Um, man, I miss those days. I mean, I, I started a trauma section that didn't exist in my video store, you know? Like I, we had we had the little room with the beads you had to go through in the back, but you also had like crazy covers. And something that I've always loved is artwork on covers. It, it is so cool. I mean, I've got the original Halloween 2 movie poster signed by Dick Warlock. It's one of my favorites. I got that in the wall. I've got like these crazy, crazy posters uh, because I I feel like that's really the starting point. When you see somebody's front door, you're like, well, it's full of garbage. I don't want to go near that place. There's all right. sorts of feces on it and all that stuff. I'm not walking over there. But you see something welcoming fun or you see something that catches your eye, you go, okay, I'm going to take a step closer. Then you watch the film, you know, and when you watch the film, and if, even if the film's not enjoyable, there's been so many movies that I've not liked, like, you know, uh, I can name a ton of them, but the poster was gnarly, you know, right. Soundtrack right. was pretty badass, but that's something that is still missing in this world. And that's why I've created this company. But, you know, the, um, you brought up this earlier, but there are movies like Puppet Master. Right. was freaking genius. I Fantastic mean, Fantastic film. And not, not only was it the cover just like, oh, you had to have, you had to watch it, right? I mean, everybody wanted to, to pick that off the shelf. Oh, yeah. That's why they made 32 of them, right? So, <laughs> yes. Axe, although Axe but, is still one of my favorites. I don't care if it's number right. 10 or whatever. It's it's still amazing. But my, my point is, is that if you can nail the cover and nail the movie at the same time, but with parameters being all in, then it's a win-win. Right. And, and and honestly, I think there's less striving for art nowadays. Um, How do you know? You know, I mean, if you want to have like, you know, you go in streaming and it's, oh, it's it's this actor on a picture and they're in a movie. Great. But you never see like, remember, remember posters like Empire and E.T. And like, even if I didn't like E.T. at all as a movie, I saw it. I don't like it at all. I despise the movie. It's just a horrible movie to make. If you like it, great. Good for you. Good for you, dude. But the poster was awesome. Great poster. You know, Jaws. You mentioned so many, Jaws earlier. Oh God, that movie scares the crap really? out of me that day. You know, I saw it as a kid, and I and I'm from. I, I spent every summer of my life at the Cape as a kid. Yeah, that's that's real down there. Yep. And there are great white sharks right sighted all the time. With you though. Yeah. I, mean, I saw that movie at a drive-in, like, mm -hmm. like when it first came out, and I'm I'm telling you, my head was in my pillow. The entire time yeah. i was freaked out but it was really a good, it's a good gateway to horror though oh for sure you know i mean i i don't let my kid's a huge horror fan my uh, my daughter zoe's a, she's 11 she's a huge horror fan like she's she's met a lot of the greats um she's she, she got she has a scream mask sign she's got all this stuff i'm taking her to see scream in march i won't let her see the house of a thousand corpses um <laughs> you know i have a line that i have you know like uh. you know yeah. That's such a good one, too, though. I love corpses. Actually, we're having a corpses party at the house. 20th anniversary makes me feel old. But Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a bigger fan of the um, Devil's Rejects. Um, but also I still a great movie. Love me some Captain Spaulding. I mean, come on. You should you should see that my end. Actually, it's, it's funny because I live this. It's not like I take these banners down. I do. But there's stuff all over. I have got oddities all over my house, like, you know, headless doll lamps and, and like creepy dolls. And I've got like four Detloff shelves full of masks and horror memorabilia. and We'll, have to, we'll have to do a show and tell 
show at some point. Sure. We'll do like so we'll uh, Con Carolina. Off everything you we'll do, yeah, we'll do Con Carolina Cribs. <laughs> true, 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 true. Ah, I love it. Of, Future show. So speaking of the con, I do have a question. Can I can I ask a favor? No, maybe. No, Let's maybe. See. Okay. Well, particularly considering you're coming to the con. So are you, are you okay with pranks? Um, depends. I have really shitty knees. If it would make me run, it might hurt me. But... Oh, no, 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 no. This one's easy. So hear me out. Okay. Yeah. So what, what I want you to do is go up to one of my friends at the con. Um, and I want you to bring with you the poster for what you think is the movie that of yours that is most likely to become an actual film um, sure. soon. And I want you to claim to be a time traveler and like show them this and be like this is a movie like it will be made in the future like i am from the future and like warn about some global apocalypse you can ad lib you know just make still, you know there's gonna, there's gonna be a massive herpes outbreak trust me get yourself tested now sure listen, yeah do whatever listen. you need to do so jay jay we are yeah. gonna have this what we do here we are gonna have the main programming stage at con carolina's and we can subject people to a lot of shenanigans because it's just going to be a constant nonstop show. Awesome. Right. So we'll have to plan something. And totally. Nick, I mean, I, I, mean, I know Nick, last time we were outside near the LARPing place and I'm like, you know, I didn't even watch them because I'm sitting there like I was looking at that nice pond out there. I'm like, God, that's beautiful. It's nice outside. Right. I'm like, wait, there's a car over here. Crap. Right. <laughs> you know, I was buying stuff left and right. But yeah, like stuff like this, it actually has, um, you know, the logos, Dolby Digital, the MPA one, the rating, yeah. the Kodak film. It's got credits and titles, so it looks legit. And that's how most of mine are, like the one that you like a lot, um, right. the Missing Miss Charlene one. It's got the credits. I put my wife in every movie. Actually, if there's Sorority 3 on the screen, she's actually the main character in that one with the fire from out of her hands. She's the supreme. I love it. So I get that. Actually, I've got that being picked up tomorrow is my first run through of printing it was <clears throat> that just got right. created so let's get let's get another quick shout out for sure. for your your social medias uh, because we are at the end of our time slot here so uh he's put them up in the chat uh, so we, we we've got that going for you so i implore you guys visit his website check out his stuff it's really fun it's really exciting it's super cool and he's going to be at Con Carolinas, and we are going to go down and support SC Horror, um, like you know, Con Carolinas crew can do. And we'll probably do some live remote for that kind of stuff, because um, that's what we do, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we do it all the time. So uh, look, we look forward to to your show, Thank and you. I look forward to you selling a ton of stuff. And I, I really look forward to them becoming movies. That's what I hear yeah. a lot. But thank you guys both for having me. It's it's been my pleasure. Yeah, you were awesome guest. Appreciate and it. Um, let me just ask the producer: Are we rating into anybody? Okay. Okay. So everybody that's in the chat, we're gonna rate on over to Nev. He's He's uh, they're playing seven days tonight. So get um, get some popcorn and watch these guys go at it. They're really hilarious, especially the elder being Nev. I mean, he is incredible. He's super funny, um, especially when he's playing. He, he just cuts me up. It cracks me up all the time. But with that being said, um, stay tuned tomorrow. We got I think Miko's got a show tomorrow. Dinks with Tinks tomorrow. But like Ray always says, Go to our Discord, hit that schedule button, and you'll be able to see all the shows that are coming up on, on this here um, Dondero and affiliates. So thanks for watching us today. Thank you, Nick, for joining us. Happy thank to be you, here. Jay. Thank you, Jay. Jim. You're awesome guest, and thank you, Sean, for putting it all together. You guys rock. We'd like to say peace and a little bit of love, and horns up, right? Yeah, yes. Two of them. Yeah. All right.